We got Zach Otto back here on the program and just coming off a huge win this past weekend at UFC on Fox 31. He gets that split decision over Dwight Grant. Zach, how are you, man? Uh, doing good. Just happy to get that win there. Uh, you know, took the fight on short notice. So, uh, and, and the guy's a, t a tough prospect. He's definitely going to have a lot of wins in the UFC, I think, going forward. So uh, it was good to get past him with a win. It certainly was. And uh, congratulations right off the bat. Uh, where does this rank in terms of not just career moments, but life moments of getting a win in Milwaukee for the UFC? And that must have been awesome. Yeah, it's way up there. Uh, I think at the, at the top of, of my career thus far, um, fighting in the new arena in Milwaukee and uh, the, um, you know, just the energy and everything in the place was absolutely awesome. Uh, made fight week really easy and getting that win was uh, just great. You know, a lot of a lot of us Milwaukee fighters had some pretty tough matchups, and uh, I, was, I was very thankful to get the win there. Now, I, I want to put to rest any conspiracy theories here. Uh, you did, in fact, change out of you, uh, your Reebok fight kit uh, since the fight, right? This is just a – you dry cleaned it and everything, everything's good? Just so people don't think you wore the same clothes like your Bart Simpson right now. Oh, no, this one is actually uh, Montel Jackson's shirt. Oh, gotcha. Okay, yeah. nice. Showing some support no, for him. I like that. Okay. Um, what was the game plan heading into the fight with Dwight? I know it was short notice, but uh, what was sort of the plan heading into the fight? Yeah, he, uh, you know, he's got a lot of power in his hands, and he really likes to hang back and counter strike, and it looked like he's pretty difficult to take down. So um, I didn't, on two-week notice, I didn't want to expend a ton of energy right away trying to get him to the ground. I was going to kind of take my time, figure out if I could um, make any openings happen on the feet. Um, he was a pretty difficult opponent, stylistic matchup, very long, a lot of power, I felt right away. So, um, and he really wasn't giving me much volume. I was really trying to like inch my way in there and throw a lot of feints and, and false starts to get him to try to think it's a counter opportunity to then counter him. Um, you know, a lot of people that are just come forward, he kind of hangs back. So they look at it as kind of an invite to come forward with more volume. They, they tend to get knocked out. By this guy so um, I had to be smart kind of play a chess match I was throwing a lot of left high kicks um, to kind of keep him from circling out that side which he likes to kind of set up his right hand by circling out towards his right so I was throwing a lot of left high kicks to try to keep that right hand home and to try to control the footwork a little bit um, and then that kind of opened up one body kick that I landed I think late in the second or something like that could have went to that more often um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things I could have done, but it is what it is. I'm um, just going to try to figure them out there. There wasn't a lot of tape on the guy. So a lot of the first round was just trying to, like, pick up reads and pick up information and, um, you know, control the octagon as much as I could with my footwork. Even though this was a short notice fight, was there anything that was unexpected in this fight? Anything that he did that you, you weren't expecting in the matchup? Uh, no, nothing that I, I didn't expect. Um I thought he was going to be pretty good in the clinch and, and all that, and he was. No, nothing really caught me by surprise. Um, I thought he'd have quite a bit of power, and he, he did, and uh, and all that. So um, I had high expectations, and and he uh, he lived up to them. It goes to the judges' scorecards. How nervous are you? Because you never know what the judges right like. And and I know you know in, during the fight, it's not like you guys are getting a tally of how the judges are scoring things. How nervous were you when it went to the judges' scorecards? Yeah, whenever there's close rounds, as coaches, we always say that we're losing. So that, you know, we really push the gas pedal there when we need to look for the finish, empty out the gas tank. You know, you shouldn't have anything left when the fight ends. And uh, did a little bit more grappling in the third round, I think was able to definitely secure the third round. But those first two rounds were toss-ups, um, especially the first round. So um, I, I was a little nervous for sure. In other wins I've had that have been split decisions kind of caught me by surprise. Uh, the Kunamoto fight and even Berkman, um, I thought those were clear victories. So when the, the scorecards start to get read off, you can tell right away that it's a split decision. You're, you get real worried, like, what the hell? What's going on? You know, am I going to lose this one? This one, as I lined up uh, next, to the, next to the referee, I, I was just – this I, I don't know what to expect and if it's a loss I get it and if it's a win you know I'm thankful but I think second round he had third round I had 
in that first round. Uh, he besides that one clean flurry he pretty much had. I I put out the more volume and I had more cage control and so I, I don't know. Um, l- luckily I I got it on this one. You closed. I don't know if you saw this on the betting lines. You closed as like a plus two fifty underdog. Did anyone message you saying they won any money on the fight? Uh, I had no idea what the odds were going into it. I really don't look at that stuff anymore. I don't read comments, uh, predictions, nothing like that. Um, but afterwards, the, obviously, a lot of people came out for the fight. And then with the event being done so early, it was done by like 9 or 9.30 or something like that. We were able to get showered up and have a full night you know, out at a, a after-party bar and all that. And quite a bit of people did some online betting on me and were – trying to reimburse me with, you know, shots and beers. <laughs> so, yeah, some, some of my friends definitely put money on me. They didn't tell me before that they were going to, to put any added pressure or anything on me, but um, some of my friends did see the odds and, and saw that they put down 100 bucks or something and Zach wins, you know, we can make a little money back here. So I did have plenty of friends that did that. So what was rougher, the, the damage you took in the fight or the uh, po- after the post-fight celebrations when people are dr- buying you drinks, you don't want to be rude. I'm sure you had to take a few of them. Uh, how are you feeling the next day? Yeah, l- luckily there was you know, a lot of people that I hadn't seen in years, which got me talking quite a bit and not just sitting there drinking the whole night. But uh, you know, got some good food afterwards and all that, which, which always helps. Um, you know, I feel really healthy. I feel good to go. I'm a little banged up, just sore, soreness, muscle soreness here and there, but I'm ready to fight again here. So we'll keep the keep the ball rolling here in the 2019. I'm going to be 32 this Saturday, and I think this is kind of like the prime of my athletic career. Sometimes it takes a while, especially in this sport, right, to, to really get good at all these different disciplines. So I think I think right now is really – my prime. So I want to, I want to make a push here in 2019 and see where it takes me. What, what date is your birthday? I was just, uh, like my math's not very good. When, uh, when, when's your 32nd? The 22nd. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm the 31st. So I, I can relate. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, we're, you're a Capricorn, correct? It isn't, doesn't that fall yeah. in the dates? Yeah. Yeah, like, I think it's like the first day of Capricorn. But. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, no, I was, uh, always find out something interesting there. So, uh, you have Montel Jackson fighting. You talked about wearing his uh, fight stuff. He's got his fight coming up here at the, at the end of the year, um, on the 232 card. I guess you're still sort of in that fight mode a little bit, just because you got to get him ready as a coach and everything like that. Um, you mentioned not being too, uh, you know, uh, bruised or whatever is the plan to try and get it there in there as soon as possible. Just keep this momentum going. Uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, I do have one more fight left on my contract and I don't want to go rushing into that one. I, I would like to, you know, put in a full training camp after the holidays here and then uh, go into this one well prepared and make sure I really capitalize on that opportunity so that I can go into my next contract, you know, you really. With- yeah, no, I hear you. You got to be smart about that. You can't just blindly go into the last fight and just, you know, then, then you're sort of in limbo at that point. Is, is there any cards you're looking at, though, that, that would interest you for, for next year? Uh, it's not so much the cards. It's just the opponent. Um, Alex Murano, again, calling him out. Uh, he's been calling me. I've been calling him. Uh, it seems like we're right in kind of the same rotation right now because I just took this fight in, in middle of December. He just fought at the very end of November. So um, he's got four wins and seven UFC fights, just like me. I think uh, it makes sense, and I think we should finally do that one. How, how would a matchup against you and him go stylistically? Uh, you know, Because I'm sure you've imagined what it would be like to fight him. I think, I think it's a great stylistic matchup. Um, we both are very comfortable standing on the, uh, standing on the feet and throwing down. Um, you know, he mixes in all the attacks with uh, clinch knees, elbows, punches, kicks, all that. Um, but at the same time, he's a he's a very good grappler, so you'll see the fight go there in his in his fights too. Um, I think it would be a fight that could go all over the place, and we you don't know if it's going to be a submission or a knockout. Uh, we both have plenty of both on our record, so I think it'd be a fun, exciting fight. Most important question in this interview: We do have Christmas coming up next week. What is Zach Otto's favorite Christmas movie? And I will accept Die Hard. <laughs> Yeah, Die Hard. I did grow up uh, watching a lot of that stuff. Um, but, oh man, favorite Christmas movie? I'll go old school. A classic. It's a wonderful life. 
Oh, nice. Okay, I like that. I like that. That's a that, that's a good one for sure. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of good Christmas ones. Um, the older ones, I need to go back and watch because it's just I think I watched them as a kid, and then of course you get caught up in all the Christmas movies like when you're growing up. Like now it's like Home Alone and all those other ones. So you, you just uh, you sparked my interest here. I'm gonna have to go check that one out again. And uh, we certainly got to check out your next fight, Zach. Again, congratulations on the win. Uh, just remind people where they can find you on social media, and if you have any sponsors or shoutouts, floor is yours, sir. Yeah, please, guys, follow me on Instagram. Uh, just my name, Zach Otto, on there as well as Facebook. And uh, I'm also on Twitter, handle at the Barbarian MMA. And I uh, just want to throw a shout out to my team, Pura Vida. Uh, really getting a lot of wins here lately. And we're going to finish off the year here with Montel Jackson. So please watch UFC 232 coming up this last card of the year and watch Montel uh, go to work.